What's up guys, this is YouTube Vids back again, trying to drop another video today if I can. So today, um, this is actually just about the Browns. Um, as many of you know, um, and maybe you don't know if you're watching this, watching me for the first time, um, you know, I'm a, definitely a Browns fan. You should be able to tell, um, you know, back wall there, um, if you don't recognize the orange and brown with the white stripe as Browns color. So, but anyways, um, yeah, so today in the football world, guys, the Browns actually made some pretty good moves, um, and not from a player personnel, from a player standpoint, but but mainly from a personnel standpoint, from an, ev an executive standpoint. So that's been, you know, probably the biggest criticism I think that any Browns fan and po even like outside observers I think have had about the Browns is just like the lack of. Um, the lack of, I think, football guys, the lack of guys who actually have experience in the organization and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to try to keep keep looking at you guys. It's kind of hard. I'm trying to look at the webcam and, and try to talk to you guys like I'm talking to you. So I'm not like looking down the whole time. And this one, guys, I'm actually going to be reading from an article from uh, Cleveland.com. I'm not going to read verbatim, but just to kind of hit on the, the main point. So one of the main points of things that happened today was... The Browns, the Browns parted way with uh, Ryan Grigson, who he spent a year he spent a year with Cleveland after being fired as the, the Colts GM. So, and I think the reason why Grigson was originally, uh, I think, hired or stayed on as the Colts GM was that after they tanked the season where Peyton Manning got injured, and then ultimately ended up the following year going to Denver. Um, you know, he was able to at least keep them relevant for like one or two years after that, um, and then eventually got fired. So um, that's so that's the reason. I think that was probably one of the reasons why the Browns looked at him to begin with, because obviously he he did have some of a somewhat of a track record for you know being part of an organization where he had to make decisions and bring in. You know, he had a, obviously they had to draft good players in order to get close to even um, you know winning. Um, although the codes do sail a lot on the talent of Andrew Luck um, with a garbage offensive line. Um, and if you didn't know, actually, the Colts is my second favorite team, so I, I have some right to, to, to talk about them that way. I don't follow them as closely as I do the Browns, but I will say that I know for a fact the Colts' offensive line is what got Andrew Luck killed. But aside from that, so Grigson was the first guy to go, was one of the guys to go. I think that was the only guy they actually mentioned in the article. Um, also today... Um, so they also mentioned, of course, Di Podosta staying around, which that was pretty much a given. I think uh, Haslam made that clear at the beginning of the offseason that, that Di Podosta was going to stay around. So when Dorsey was hired, Ken, uh, when, uh, when uh, D Dorsey was hired, um, I believe it sounded like what ha Haslam basically said, look, you're going to get hired, you're going to have some control, but you're not you're not going to fire Hugh Jackson and Di is going to stay around. So those are the two guys you have to you have to find some way to cope with. But other than that, it sound, you know, it seems like he was given the keys to do other things. So some of the other things that that Dorsey did today was he added or over the past, you know, couple of days whatever it was, this news is coming out today though. He also brought on Jimmy Knoll as assistant director of pro scouting. Um, Matt Donna, Dan, Donahoe or Donahue, it looks like Donahoe, um, as scout and Dan Zeggers as personnel coordinator. So, and actually all three of these guys actually all are coming from the Kansas city chiefs. Now, yeah, I get, I understand like how that's like a form. That's, that's the place where you used to work. So you kind of have, you know, you have connections and stuff like that with those guys. You know, I get that you want to have people you know working with you to make you at least a little bit more comfortable. And, you know, maybe maybe he really thinks he can count on these guys. And at the same time, like trying to think of it from a from an outsider's perspective. Um, the reason why it makes sense in a, in, a, in a way is that these guys have been part of a Kansas City team that like they haven't been they haven't been horrible. They've actually gotten a, a pretty good handful of good players over the past, you know, few years to 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 strengthen their, their the core of their defense um and better their offense and and stuff like that so i mean these guys obviously have done enough to keep their team relevant and close to the playoffs if not in the playoffs um so hey you know what if they if they can help the browns you know do better in terms of drafting and stuff like that then you know hey i'm all for it right um let's see what else 
Who else was there? There was also Alonzo Highsmith. So Alonzo Highsmith was Green Bay's former senior personnel executive. And with the Browns, he's going to become a uh, vice president of player personnel. So it said that Brown... Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to read through this. So there was Kevin Kovash, who was Sashi Brown's... It's Kevin Kovash, who I guess he was already an existing piece in the cog. So he had the he had the title of... He had, uh, he had um, Highsmith's new title... He had that title the past two seasons, um, and so he will transition to the vice president role in the club strategy department. So he's actually getting a promotion, um, if you will, and then so High Highsmith's going to come in, and it sounds like he's going to be under him. So, um, so there's also. Uh, Andrew Barry as well. So Andrew Barry looks like he was another guy that was on the staff as well. And so he's going to be working alongside um, Highsmith as well. They're going to be on the same level um, under, I believe, under uh, Dorsey. So then the the, the biggest, the biggest uh, thing, which maybe probably most people have heard about today, um, was that the Browns brought on uh, the Green Bay Packers former director of football operations, Elliot Wolf. Now, the reason why I kind of say this one for last and not first is because for anyone who's been reading the news or any of the buzz around this is the fact that Elliot Wolf is considered like is a was considered a highly regarded um, GM and executive. And you know, the comments I've seen is like, hey, this guy was was he's he's been quoted as or, or I guess promoted as being one of the best future executives in football. He's got a real football mind. The guy's been doing it for a long time. Um, I thought I read up some profile on him, and it said, like, this guy started doing, like, he was doing scouting and stuff with his with his, his dad when he was, like, 10 years old. So the guy's been in football for a long time, and he's a football guy. He's got a football mind. And so apparently the Packers let this guy slip away. It sounded like the Packers were interested in him, and the guy actually had an interview lined up. He was supposed to go talk to the Raiders, but the Browns were able to, I guess, convince him before he went to go to the before he went to even go talk to Oakland. Um, the Browns convinced him to sign on board. So whatever they gave him must have been good enough to convince him to not go chill with John Gruden. Which, from what I read, sounded like he worked with John Gruden at some point in the past. So he he was actually familiar with John Gruden. So it's kind of interesting that he actually didn't even bother navigating that route. Um, considering that he had some familiarity with, with Gruden. But um, so to me, like, it sounds like this is a huge thing. I mean, the guy obviously comes in with being part of an organization that has at least one, you know, some Super Bowl rings. And the guy comes in with a lot of experience, a lot of football knowledge. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how this begins to shape, you know, what will be a revised, a, a vastly revised um, Brown's executive, um, Brown's executive personnel department. So, you know, as a Browns fan, you know, it sounds encouraging, but you know, as a Browns, but as also as a Browns fan, you know, it's kind of like the same crap that you almost hear every year with the exception that you don't normally, we haven't normally seen as, as, a, as a Browns fan, you have, we haven't normally seen changes like this from an executive standpoint. Like they're not very like, they're not these guys that you just like hear about and people are like, Oh my God, like, you know, this team wanted that guy and that team wanted that guy. You know, these aren't Dorsey was one team was one guy that the, the giants had an interview with. So again, Dorsey was a guy who was coveted by multiple teams. And again, this other guy, uh, Elliot Wolf was another guy who was coveted by multiple teams. So it's good to see that the Browns are actually going after guys that, you know, other teams may want. And the same way actually applied for Hugh Jackson as well. You know, Hugh Jackson was also being pursued by multiple teams a couple of years ago. Um, you know, and record aside, you know, there was a reason for that. Um, but we'll see now, you know, now he's got an executive, an executive core that's filled with guys who have football talent. They have a history of being part of teams that have, um, you know, done things and been successful, had had successful organizations. And so it'll be interesting to see if the Browns, you know, if they actually picked those, the guys that were actually, 
that played that actually played a big role in making those teams as successful as they were. Because sometimes, you know, you can pluck these guys off the bottom. You know, you can cherry pick certain guys, but then the only reason why you got them, usually like you only get these guys because, well, obviously they were expendable, right? But it sounds like with these guys that we got, like between now Dorsey, I don't think he was, he actually had a job at the time. I'm pretty sure. Um, but again, both of teams were after him. And again, this Wolf guy, it sounded like, you know, people, you know, the Packers wanted to keep him. They said they, it said that they had interest in keeping this guy. And again, the Raiders of all teams, you know, after signing that huge thing with having the huge thing with signing Gruden, you know, they were looking at him. And so for the Browns to steal this guy up from, from underneath their noses, you know, so to speak, I mean, it could end up being, you know, that kind of that 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 moment in sports history where we potentially look back on. Now, again, I'm not trying to get too like overexcited about it because clearly, you know, we still have an off season. There's still an off season to go. There's still games to be played to see like how all this stuff works out. But it is exciting again to see that they've actually done something. They've made some big hires in the past few years, and they're willing to get people to come to Cleveland to try to turn the organization around. So I don't want to give too much credit yet, but I will give some credit to, you know, uh, Jimmy Haslam and to Dorsey for, you know, making this stuff start to come together and hopefully being at a point where they can finally start to turn this thing around guys. So, um, yeah, so, and, uh, that's all I wanted to say, you know, it's just kind of a random vid about the happenings today in the NFL. Um, and it kind of summarizes all the stuff specifically for the Browns, you know, not just all the NFL, but this is specifically for the Browns. These are some things, all the various things that happened today for them that were reported in various news reports. And so this is my way of summing it up. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, I will see you guys later, dudes. Take care.